Hey Mastiff family, this is Alyssa from Muddy Mastiffs. I'm just sitting at my desk waiting for a video to upload for our website, and I thought I'd record um, a quick video for you guys. I don't know that I've seen this on YouTube anywhere. This is the official breed standard for the Mastiff um, by the American Kennel Club. And this is what breeders should be striving to produce. Even if we're not showing, we should still be endeavoring to better the breed. Um, we do have a litter of 12 English Mastiffs. Of course, they're already um, starting to sell, but if you're interested in them, you can go ahead and contact us. And I'm going to just go ahead and show you guys this breed standard. Okay, the official standard of the Mastiff, general appearance. The Mastiff is a large, massive, symmetrical dog with a well-knit frame. The impression is one of grandeur and dignity. Dogs are more massive throughout, and a dog in this case would be the males. Bitches, which is the female, should not be faulted for being somewhat smaller in all dimensions while maintaining proportionally powerful structure. A good evaluation considers positive qualities of type and soundness with equal weight. So just to explain this section, we generally find that our stud is bigger than our females. This isn't a complete 100% thing. Um, we do have a girl that's comparable in size to him. Um, I don't think she's quite got him on weight, but when she finishes filling out, she might. Um, so it's not a fault though, if your female is a little bit smaller than your male, as long as it's still got the Mastiff type. All right, the next section is size, proportion, and substance. Size, dogs, again, that's the male, minimum of 30 inches at the shoulder. Bitches, again, that's the female, minimum 27 inches at the shoulder. Fault, dogs or bitches below the minimum standard. In other words, if your dog is not, if your dog or your bitch is not tall enough, um, then they're not meeting up to the AKC standard. The farther below standard, the greater the fault. So the smaller that they are compared to standard, um, the bigger the fault is if you were showing your dog in a show ring. Proportion, rectangular. The length of the dog from forechest to rump is somewhat longer than the height at the withers. The height of the dog should come from depth of body rather than from length of leg. Okay, so Mastiffs, in other words, are supposed to have a really blocky appearance and they're supposed to look big and beefy. Um, we're not going for like a really thin, long-legged appearance like you would in some other breeds. A Mastiff is supposed to be big in the chest rather than tall in the legs. The height of the dog should come from the depth of body rather than the length of leg. All right, substance. Mastiff, heavy bone with a powerful muscle structure. Great depth and breadth, desirable. Fault, lack of substance or slab-sided. You don't want your Mastiff to be puny looking, you want it to look big and muscular. Head, in general outline giving a massive appearance when viewed from any angle. Breadth, greatly desired. This is that huge blocky Mastiff head that we've all come to enjoy. And our, our stud Bane is probably a very good example of this. Um, he looks, he, it, he is from Show Lines. We haven't shown him ourselves, but if you look at his pictures, uh, he looks very, very similar to the dogs that you'll see in the show ring. Eyes, set wide apart, medium in size, never too prominent. Again, in the Mastiff breed with such a big and blocky head, you will notice the eyes are not the main, the main thing that you see. You're gonna notice their muzzle. You will notice their eyes, but their eyes aren't that big. Um, when, the, when you're set in such a big face, you know, you're really focusing on all the beautiful wrinkles. Oh dear, somebody is mowing outside. It sounds like they just hit something. Um, all right, where was I? 
All right, expression. Alert but kindly. Color of eyes brown, the darker the better, and showing no haw. Light eyes or a predatory expression is undesirable. Again, it is important with a giant breed that they have a good temperament. Ears, small in proportion to the skull, V-shaped, rounded at the tips. Leather, moderately thin, set widely apart at the highest points on the sides of the skull, continuing the outline across the summit. They should lie close to the cheeks when in repose. Eyes, or I'm sorry, ears, dark in color, the blacker the better, conforming to the color of the muzzle. Skull, broad and somewhat flattened between the ears. Forehead slightly curved, showing marked wrinkles, which are particularly distinctive when at attention. And brows, superciliary ridges, moderately raised. Muscles of the temples well developed, those of the cheeks extremely powerful. Arch across the skull, a flattened curve with a furrow up the center of the forehead. This extends from between the eyes to halfway up the skull. The stop between the eyes well marked, but not too abrupt. Muzzle should be half the length of the skull, thus dividing the head into three parts, one for the foreface and two for the skull. In other words, the distance from the tip of the nose to stop is equal to one half the distance between the stop and the occup. I'm not sure how to pronounce that word. Occupant. Circumference of the muzzle measured midway between the eyes and nose to that of the head measured before the ears is as three to five. Muzzle short, broad under the eyes and running nearly equal in width to the end of the nose, truncated, i.e. blunt and cut off square, thus forming a right angle with the upper line of the surface. Oh, I'm sorry, with the upper line of the face of great depth from the point of the nose to the underjaw. Underjaw broad to the end and slightly rounded. Muzzle is dark in color, the blacker the better. Fault, snippiness of the muzzle. Nose broad and always dark in color, the blacker the better. With spread flat nostrils, not pointed or turned up in profile. Lips diverging at obtuse angles with the septum and sufficiently pendulous so as to show a modified square profile. Again, you want that big blocky face. Canine teeth, healthy and wide apart, jaws powerful. Scissors bite preferred, but a moderately undershot jaw should not be faulted, providing the teeth are not visible when the mouth is closed. Page number two, neck, top line body. Neck, powerful, very muscular, slightly arched, and of medium length. The neck gradually increases in circumference as it approaches the shoulder. Neck moderately dry, not showing an excess of loose skin. Top line. In profile, the top line should be straight, level, and firm, not sway-backed, roached, or dropping off sharply behind the high point of the rump. Chest wide, deep, rounded, and well let down between the forelegs, extending at least to the elbow. Fore chest should be deep and well defined with the breastbone extending in front of the foremost point of the shoulders. Ribs well-rounded. False ribs deep and well set back, underline. There should be a reasonable but not exaggerated tuck up. Back muscular, powerful, and straight. When viewed from the rear, there should be a slight rounding over the rump. Loins wide and muscular. Tail set on moderately high and reaching to the hocks or a little below. Wide at the root, tapering to the end, hanging straight in repose, forming a slight curve, but never over the back when the dog is in motion. And I would just note in this section, um, you want your dog to be not too fat and not too skinny, and they tend to take a while to fill out. So a younger dog, um, a younger dog may seem a little bit more skinny. While I've also seen people, um, I've heard that people overfeed their mastiffs and they're going for, you know, weight as opposed to really trying to you know have the healthiest dog so you don't want to err on either side four quarters shoulders moderately sloping powerful and muscular with no tendency to looseness degree of front angulation to match correct rear angulation legs straight strong and set wide apart heavy boned elbows parallel to body pasterns strong and bent only slightly Feet large, round, and compact with well-arched toes, black nails preferred. 
side note, I can't tell you if this is 100% true, but I have heard that you can kind of tell that a dog is going to be big based on their paws when they're a puppy. Um, and I have had puppies with big paws before, so uh, we'll have to update you if this is really true or not. Hind quarters, hind quarters broad, wide and muscular. Second thighs well developed, leading to a strong hock joint. Stiffle joint is moderately angulated matching the front. Rear legs are wide apart and parallel when viewed from the rear. When the portion of the leg below the hock is correctly set back and stands perpendicular to the ground, a plumb line dropped from the rearmost point of the hindquarters will pass in front of the foot. This rules out straight hocks, and since stifle angulation varies with hock angulation, it also rules out insufficiently angulated stifles, fault, straight st stifles. Okay, this explains to me why in dog shows you see people making their dog stand a certain way with their back legs out a little bit. Um, I guess that they're showing that their dog meets this hindquarter standard. Coat, outer coat, straight, coarse, and of moderately short length. Undercoat, dense, short, and close lying. Coat should not be so long as to produce fringe on the belly, tail, or hind legs. Fault, long coat or wavy coat. Um, I will note here that I have seen something called a fluffy in the English Mastiff line. And I believe back a long time ago, um, the English Mastiff breed almost died out and they used other dogs to try to bring them back. So I'm not shocked that there are fluffies in the breed, but it, and <laughs> all right, they are beautiful and they make fabulous pets, but just note here that they do not match the current breed standard with AKC in the United States, but people do love them. So here at Muddy Mastiffs, we do not breed fluffies, uh, but we certainly aren't gonna judge you if you're looking for a fluffy. I've heard that they're wonderful dogs. All right, color, fawn, apricot, or brindle. Brindle should have fawn or apricot as a background color which should be completely covered with very dark stripes. I will note here that there are different types of brindles. This is absolutely true. For example, our Nina, she has like the lightest fawn, blondest fawn underneath with really, really dark overtones, um, stripes. And I have seen pictures though, where a dog will have like apricot underneath and then they have dark overtones. So brindles are not all the same. Back to the AKC printout. Muzzle, ears, and nose must be dark in color. The blacker the better with similar color tone around the eye orbits and extending upward between them. A small patch of white on the chest is permitted. Faults, excessive white on the chest or white on any other part of the body. Mask, ears, or nose lacking dark pigment. And um, here I'm going to insert a little rant. Um, I have seen people selling mastiffs with a lot of white on them, and that is a fault of the breed standard. So um, I, have, I have personally spoken to somebody who has years of experience and um, you know they show their dogs and everything and yet the litter of puppies that I was looking at had a bunch of white on them and this is why it pays to be familiar with the breed standard. Um, if you're looking for a pet you might not care as much but you know you still should want you still should want people to produce the best quality dogs that they can and excessive white is just a fault in this breed um, if you're looking to show the dog. Again, um, dogs in any shape and size can be fabulous pets, but you do want to make sure they're not going to have medical issues or anything like that. All right, gait. The gait denotes power and strength. The rear legs should have drive while forelegs should track smoothly with good reach. In motion, the legs move straight forward as the dog's speed increases from a walk to a trot. The feet move in toward the center line of the body to maintain balance. Temperament, and this is a big one. A combination of grandeur and good nature, courage and docility, dignity rather than gaiety is the Mastiff's correct demeanor. 
judges should not condone shyness or viciousness. Conversely, judges should also be aware of putting a premium on showiness. If you are going to have a giant breed, again, temperament is so important. That is why we um, focus so much on training and socialization when our puppies are young. And this needs to be continued when you are at home with your puppy. All right, it's been great chatting with you guys and I hope you have a wonderful day. Hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, go ahead and give us a like and subscribe to our channel.